So for live sound in stereo or mono, that is a question that has been brought up to us during our live shows as well as uh, through some emails. And it's really something that can't be answered with, yes, you definitely have to use stereo or you have to definitely use mono. So this is just gonna be a brief overview of stereo uh, for live sound or mono for, si for live sound. And we use, 99% of the shows that we do have all been in mono. And that doesn't mean that we can't do stereo, but there's definitely some benefits to mono uh, versus stereo. So, and very important, uh, what I have to mention here is that running shows in stereo or mono uh, can be very personal to a lot of people. And uh, I understand how how a lot of thinking is that, well, you know, I have two outputs on the mixer, I need to use them both. Therefore, this show needs to be in stereo. Or people say, well, stereo sounds so much better. Well, there's some benefits to stereo as well as there's benefits to mono. And uh, so far, um, we've never had any issues, any issues with anybody ever saying anything about sound quality in mono for the shows that we've done. Uh, the sound clarity can be just as good uh, if not better than in stereo. So this topic, as I said, can be very personal to a lot of people in live sound. Um, so if you are interested in stereo mono, uh, hopefully this, this uh, video will give you um, a better understanding of what mono is in live sound. So if you have any misunderstandings of what it is, uh, hopefully uh, this will enlighten it. Uh, there can be a lot of um, discussions about stereo and mono, but um, this video is uh, really about, uh, it's focusing on the mono side of it. Uh, but there, said so again, there are benefits between stereo and mono. And hopefully we don't offend anybody by, uh, by anything that you see here or what you may hear. Uh, but um, it, mono really does have some other benefits and hopefully uh, we can shed some light on those. And uh, most importantly there, the bottom words, this is not intended to convince you to use mono. Uh, it's just um, maybe have a better understanding of what it is. So uh, getting started in this, uh, in stereo, there is a left and right channel. And uh, for true stereo, which uh, some people do in live sound, there, you have two independent channels. And for mono, I, I think what a lot of people uh, don't understand about mono is mono is not uh, like on your home stereo when you push a button and uh, when it says like FM stereo, then you go to FM mono. Mono and live sound is not this uh, pushing a button and then all of a sudden you've got this uh, weird sounding uh, kind of environment going on in mono. Uh, mono is not that. Mono in live sound is the same signal that's coming out of both sides. And I know it seems simple, but, um, uh, and, and it can be simple, but uh, I think some people miss the concept of what mono is. And uh, in defense of people that do stuff in stereo, uh, stereo is great uh, for certain things. And I think some people that are in the recording industry get into the live sound side of it. And they bring over a lot of their knowledge and methodologies uh, from the recording side. Not to say that everybody does that, but um, uh, I've come across a few people who enjoyed recording, thought they wanted to go into live sound, so they started doing stuff in bars and um, other maybe larger venues, and uh, it just it never really sounded right, and they sort of complained like nothing sounds right. So hopefully uh, this will maybe enlighten uh, maybe some of those people that uh, have always done stuff in stereo. So uh, in looking at the hardware on the console outputs of a lot of a lot of consoles, you have a right and a left, and most of them uh, on the left that shows mono. Well, there, there's a reason for that. Uh, but uh, the console faders, uh, some people have been confused. Uh, when I have one front of house fader, uh, they always ask, well, how does that control the left and right out? Well, that's up to the panning that takes place. You gotta pan your left or right uh, on your channels or in your subgroups to get it to come out of the left and right. And uh, people with two faders, obviously that that's uh, easily understandable as having a, 
left and right faders, so it controls the left and right outs on the board. There is a third one that is a center, uh, but we're not going to discuss that. Uh, a lot of boards have left, right, and center, or sometimes called left, center, right. Uh, but so we're not going to discuss the center, so we're just going to remove that. Uh, so in the stereo output, there's two channels, two independent uh, signals coming out of the board, and they can go into a crossover or they can go directly into an EQ. But here we're going to send to a crossover or sometimes like a drive unit or a, a speaker processor unit. And from there, uh, the signals are fed to the uh, mid and high and low amplifiers. And again, we're, we're talking about two uh, lines uh, coming out for each amplifier. So you've got four lines coming out of your uh, drive unit or your crossover going into uh, mid, a mid and high amp as well as a low amplifier. Uh, stereo, as I said, is great uh, for certain things. Uh, take a look at this at the uh, drawing here. The speakers left and right. We have our audience in the middle. Uh, now, if you listen to stuff in, in headphones, like if you are now, I'm actually recording this in stereo. Uh, but stereo is great for headphones, small coffee shop events, home stereo surround sound, uh, any kind of recordings that's going on. But uh, stereo may not be the best choice for live sound. And this is what I'm sort of hoping to uh, enlighten people who've had, who have may have had a bad experience trying to get a good balance with stereo. Uh, let's say that you're at front of house. Well, what happens is that what a lot of people do in stereo is they pan, um, they pan their signals left and right, hard left and hard right sometimes which uh, in stereo, I, it does, it sounds fantastic if you're listening to your headphones, uh, if you've got your home stereo on. But in live sound, what happens is that the, half the audience is hearing only half of the music. Uh, now that may be an exaggeration, but uh, I, I can almost guarantee if you are panning hard left and hard right, uh, only half your audience is hearing half the music. Uh, there may be some phasing issues, of course, it, to do true stereo, it's going to require double the cabling requirements. And as well, you're going to have a uh, greater number of snake channel returns. So for those of you who have uh, maybe only four returns on your snake, uh, all four returns are going to have to be taken just to do a stereo uh, front of house sound. And of course, and if you're doing it stereo, you're going to have to have two separate EQ channels needed, uh, one for the left and one for the right. And uh, in the uh, in the drawing, I'm, I'm use that as an example. I've been to a couple of shows. This has been over the past many years, where the front house engineer was uh, panning instruments either hard left or hard right, depending upon uh, where the performers were relative to the stage. So there was a guitarist. He was on the right hand side of the stage, and if you're facing the stage, he was on the right hand side. Well, the front house engineer had the guitarist panned all the way over to the right. And uh, during one of these shows, I was up front, closer to the stage area, and I could hear the guitars, great. But I couldn't, I could barely hear the keyboardist. So I made my way over to the left side of the stage, where lo and behold, here's the keyboardist. But then I can hear all the keyboard, and I could not hear the uh, guitarist. So I knew immediately this, this person was doing a full stereo uh, front of house sound. You know, and I'm sure back at the uh, front of house booth, it probably sounded pretty good but the people up front with the best seats have probably got the crappiest sound. So that's sort of something to keep in mind. Some engineers do pan hard left and hard right to get a, a good stereo image, but uh, for, for a live sound, especially for uh, maybe larger stages, that may not be such a good idea. Uh, as I said, probably only half the people are gonna be hearing half of the music. So in looking at our stereo output uh, for the two channels, uh, we're taking up uh, four cables uh, coming from the drive unit or the crossover unit into the uh, amplifiers. And we're just assuming these are just two channel stereo amplifiers. Now, in looking at a mono setup, the, uh, the number of cabling is gonna be cut in half. So, for running mono, we're just going to use the left side of an output, any board, and all we need is one cable coming out to the drive or to the crossover unit, 
and uh, one cable goes to the mid high, one goes to the low. Now, uh, many modern amplifiers do have something that's called parallel uh, on the amplifiers. And what it does is it basically, uh, when you set an amplifier to do parallel, it's just going to replicate the signal uh, from the channel that it came on, it's gonna replicate it to the other channel. So you only need one cable coming into an amplifier to run um, two channels off that amplifier. And to ping mono on a board, which uh, I think maybe um, some people may not know how because they're so focused or so used to doing stereo. But if you have a ST, which is sometimes called a stereo switch on your board, uh, you want to set that switch. You want to turn it on and you want to pan all your channels to the left. Everything goes to the left because you want everything to come out of the left side. And you know, actually you could use right as well, but um, we're just going to keep with um, what's sort of been standard over the years and use left as mono. And if, but if you have all your channels panned uh, to subgroups and all you've got to do is just assign your subgroup to the left. Um, it's very, very simple to do. And use your left fader. If you have two faders, if not, hey, you can still use a single fader, uh, like on some of the Yamaha boards. Fairly simple to do. So back on the stereo output, this is what you're changing it uh, from. So you can get rid of um, half the cabling. So on one channel, either left or right, uh, as I said, we're using left uh, speakers. Here's our audience, here's our front of house. This is what we're gonna get uh, when you're running mono. So what comes out of the left side is coming out of the right side. So mono provides the same signal for left and right speakers. The entire audience is going to hear the same instruments and vocals. And uh, in trying to cover a large crowd, I think this is very important um, because if the speakers are too far apart and you're trying to do something in stereo, it goes right back to the, uh, you know, only half the crowd is going to hear half the, half the uh, music. So your cabling is reduced, as you saw from the other side, and uh, you only need half the returns that is needed for stereo, for, um, pardon me, you only need half the returns than what's needed for stereo. So if you remember, if you've got a four channel snake, which is, um, I'm sorry, four returns on your snake, which is fairly common, that you only need to have two, because one's gonna be sending the highs, one's gonna be sending the lows. And as well, you only need a single EQ for the front of house. So, What's the right choice? Well, really the question is what's the best choice? We're not saying stereo can't be used. I mean, it certainly can be used, uh, but uh, the best choice is gonna be the one that works best for the environment and for the music. Um, so I said the, these slides in this presentation, presentation is focused more on the mono side of it, just hopefully to dispel maybe some of the myths about mono. Uh, stereo works great in places where everyone can hear both the speakers and that's important to know because if the whole crowd if, if the whole crowd can only hear one side of the speakers then you probably don't want to be doing something in stereo so let's take a look at the speakers um, up close uh, maybe 10 feet apart that, that would be a good stereo image but the problems come in is that as the speakers start getting further apart um, let's just say that these things are 35 feet apart, this is probably a bad choice for stereo, especially if you're trying to pan things hard left and hard right. Um, speakers close together, they do sound great, just like guitar cabinets, amplifiers, uh, keyboards, I think keyboards sound fantastic, as long as you can hear both speakers at the same time, even some vocal processors. Um, but uh, some people have, um, they've come to me asking what, how they can set up a mono when they're doing two feeds out of the board. And I told them just only send one feed. And I think also part of the confusion, it comes into, uh, they're not too sure how to pan stuff, either to the left or to the right. And I've seen some boards set up where they they think they're doing a stereo, uh, they're doing a stereo front of house, but in actuality, they were doing mono because they had nothing panned. Uh, all the channels were set in the center. They were using subgroups. Subgroups were set in the center, but yet they had right and left coming out of the board. And uh, 
they were again complaining about, well, you know, I, I need to get a bigger snake. Uh, I need, uh, you know, a bigger snake to support more returns. But uh, after explaining to them how to pan stuff left or right uh, to get a mono feed, they could get rid of their, um, they could get rid of half the cabling requirements. They wanted to do mono, but they were actually trying to do it with uh, stereo. I mean, with two feeds coming out of the board. You can, uh, but once again, it maybe sort of defeats the purpose of having the extra cabling installed when actually you only need half of it to do actual mono. So looking back at the speakers, uh, once they're, if they're together like this, like you know, sometimes guitar cabinets, they've got two speakers in them, independent speakers, stereo imaging, same with the keyboards. Um, but once again, when you start moving stuff apart, it is time to switch from a stereo image into a mono image. Uh, just because you need, you need the sound to be the same on both sides so everybody can hear it. So stereo does have its benefits uh, for certain venues, just like mono has its benefits for certain venues. So if you've never used mono, you may want to give it a try. Uh, if, if you've got a big stage you've got to do where you know, your, your speakers may be 25, 35 feet apart, give mono a try. I, I think you would be surprised at the sound quality. Uh, so in using mono, once again, just sort of recap, you only need one console output. Uh, you need to cut your cabling requirements in half, that is the uh, connections that are made uh, at front of house, as well as what's taken up on the snake. And uh, you can also, you, you can use less front of house EQ channels, and really you just need one front of house EQ. And not that you, you, you would be using EQ a lot for front of house, uh, but it's just something less you've got to worry about. So if you have to make a change, you just want to have to make a change uh, on one frequency, you just cut it and it affects, uh, affects both sides of the stage. You don't have to go through and try to match up the uh, cuts and the frequencies. So what's the best choice, stereo or mono? Well, like I said before, it really all depends on the environment, but uh, give mono a try. I, I think you'll be surprised. And as always, thanks for watching.